Hello, my name is Peter Raymer, and today we're going to talk about how to connect to a test D365 database. Uh, if you're familiar with these, uh, right now we're in LCS, Lifecycle Services. We've connected to a project, and within this project, this is where we can see all of the cloud hosted development environments as well as Microsoft tenancy environments. Um, the cloud hosted and environments are right here um, but then there's Microsoft hosted environments right here well the thing is uh, for Microsoft uh, tenancy boxes we are not able to remote into the back end of that database anymore um, and so we can't directly access the database using SQL Management Studio on um, that machine uh, like we can with the development environment that said, there's still a way that we can connect to this database. This is really helpful if you're debugging, say, a batch job, and it's not picking up the records that you'd expect them to. Normally, you would need to take a backup um, of the current database, restore it to a development environment, and then debug through the code to figure out what's going on. But occasionally, being able to see the underlying data um, by querying the database directly um, can help you figure out what's going on without taking all those steps. Um, so there's definitely a lot of use cases where either querying the test database or even updating values in the test database using a SQL script could be helpful. So I'm going to show you how you can connect to this database. There's a few steps um, to be able to do that. Um, so let's get started. Uh, so I'm in this LCS environment. I'm going to go ahead and click full details on this front end Microsoft tenancy um, machine. Now that this page has come up, uh, we can take a look at this manage environment tab and we can see that there's this section here, database accounts. If you are on a dev hosted environment, you'd actually see all the database uh, accounts and what information is already there. Um, but by default, those are not shown um, in these Microsoft tenancy environments. So what we need to do is actually request this access information. So you can select one from the dropdown. I'm going to say AX troubleshooting. Um, and then the details can just be any comment that you want, um, again, for kind of tracking purposes. The, next, you need to click the request access button. This is the dialog we see. It says your request for JIT, which stands for just in time access, has been successfully submitted. Your just in time account and password will appear in the credentials list in several minutes. You will need to refresh the page until they appear. Once they appear, the just in time account will be valid for eight hours. So it's just important to know that these credentials are only valid for a limit of time. So you can do your work and then um, move on. And if you need to do it again, uh, future day, you just need to request access again. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And then at this point, I'll pause the video and I'm going to click refresh on my browser um, until I see those credentials show up. Okay, I've refreshed my browser um, and I didn't actually have to wait very long and now I see this new database accounts here with um, some information that we can use to connect to the database. Um, so before we get into this, let's talk about what tool we can use to connect to the database. And the typical tool is to use Microsoft um, SQL Server Management Studio. You can log into a cloud hosted dev environment and they will already be um, installed by default. So that's a great option to use. Or you can even download the tool itself on your local machine and run it from there. So if you want to download it, you can just Google SQL Server uh, Management Studio. Um, I'm using 2018. But if you click there, the first link here will take you there. And then uh, once you're on this download page, um, you can click this here, Download SQL Server Management Studio and get that installed. Let's go ahead and run that since I've already got it installed. I'll type SQL Server Management Studio or SSMS for short. 
Okay, now that uh, SQL Server Management Studio has opened, um, by default, you get this pop-up dialog asking you for um, the server name and connection information. If you don't see this or you canceled out of this, um, the way to get it back is through this Object Explorer window. If you don't see the Object Explorer window, you can say View Object Explorer. And then once you see the Object Explorer, you can say Connect database engine and it'll pop up this dialog again um, in our case we're going to put in the credentials that we have over on our other page um, so back in LCS we have several different pieces of information we've got the SQL server slash database name and they've actually combined both of those in the same field I kinda it would be nice if they split them out um, but they're all in one field so what I usually like to do is just open notepad and then once notepads open you can paste this in and again the format that you're gonna see here is that um, the SQL server is this first part of the slash and then the SQL database is after the slash so I'm gonna go ahead and delete this backslash and now I have these two pieces of information so I'm gonna take the SQL server information and then I can paste that into SQL management studio uh, in the server name field next um, in order to put the database name I actually need to click this options button. When I do that, it's going to automatically show me some more information and some more tabs. Um, it's going to select this connection properties tab and show me connect to database. So here I can paste in the name of my database and then um, I can go either click the options button to go back or just click the login to go back to um, this front screen. The next thing I need to do is make sure that the authentication mode is set to SQL Server Authentication. And then I can paste in my login and password. So I will go grab the username right here um, and paste that into the login field. And then I'll grab my um, password field and paste it into here. You can optionally click the remember password checkbox. Um, this is nice uh, so that you don't have to copy and paste the password um, each time. So then now that we've got the server name, the database, the login and password, we can click connect to try to connect. And sure enough, I was expecting this, we are getting this error message. It says your client IP address does not have access to the server. Sign in to an Azure account and create a new firewall rule to enable access. Okay, so no problem there. Um, what this, I'll tell you what you need to do next. We need to go back to LCS and go back to this uh, full details page of the environment we're trying to connect to. The system's basically got a firewall rule set up for added security. We need to add a firewall rule to let our particular machine um, talk to the database. So the way we do that is we click maintain and then we select this option, enable access. We'll get this pop up here that says modify firewall rules. If you have uh, rules already set up, you'd see them in here, but usually you won't. Um, then we're going to click this plus button to create a new firewall rule. It's going to pop up another dialog. This one says add an inbound allow rule. This first drop dropdown uh, does only has one option, Azure SQL, so we can leave it as that. The name um, can be anything that you want. So it can be, you know, my work computer or something like that. Uh, it's just a description so you understand what it is. And then this last thing's the important piece. This is going to ask you for your public IP address. And this is what the firewall is going to allow um, connection attempts from this IP address. So how do we get our public IP address? If you open another browser, this is the easiest way. You can just type in what's my IP.com 
and hit enter and this system will dynamically show you what your IP address is um, as of right now. So here's our, my public IP address. I'm going to go back into uh, this dialog. I'll paste my IP address. Let's see, maybe I'll click this copy button here. I think that works a little better. Then paste it into here. And then I can say confirm. After clicking confirm, I get this message right here reminding me that this firewall rule will only last for eight hours. Um, so if I need to do work again after that eight hours, I'm going to set up another firewall rule. So I'll go ahead and dismiss this by clicking OK. Um, you'll then see your firewall rule um, here in the list along with whatever name you have in case you have multiple firewall rules. Then I can click close on this dialog. Now I can go back to SQL Server Management Studio. I'll just click cancel on this pop up here and I'm going to try clicking connect again. Hopefully now it will allow us to connect and sure enough it does. I can see that it's worked because I'm seeing the server right here and in a second I see the databases folder. I can expand databases and I can see my um, test Dynamics 365 uh, database. Uh, so this is really fantastic. From here, I can go ahead and expand, you know, tables and views and um, look at columns of tables. Um, I can also just click new query to open a new SQL uh, query editor. And then from here, I can query my data, maybe check out the status of some staging table or even update data. Um, so just to show you real quick, I can type select star from invent table which uh, shows all the items. I can click execute or F5 and now I'm seeing items. So this is a really helpful tool. Um, it can save you some time when you're debugging or trying to investigate why something in test is not working or perhaps you've got um, data that's just not possible to be seen um, from the front end. You can query it uh, using SQL Management Studio or some other cases where um, data is just in a bad state and you need to be able to update it to move past a different error message. And it'd be faster to do it this way than running um, an X++ uh, runnable class um, to correct the data. Uh, okay, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you watching. If you like the video, click the like button. I also invite you to push the subscribe button as well. If there's other topics you would like to see a video on, please post in the comments and I'll see what I can do. I hope you learned something new today. Thank you.